водочки мне принеси. Give the video a like and don't forget to subscribe if you want to know more about Russia. In the year 1920, the Soviet scientist Ilya Ivanovich Ivanov conducted the controversial experiment of fertilizing monkeys with human sperm. The experiment attracted enormous attention and caused a significant outcry in the scientific community because it challenged the boundaries of ethical and moral considerations in scientific research. This video will explain what happened during the experiment and its aftermath. 1926th year. Moscow. The night silence of the apartment of Soviet writer Mikhail Bulgakov is suddenly broken by a sharp and demanding call at the door. The men in civilian clothes who burst in are looking for only one thing, the manuscript of the writer's new book Dog's Heart. The author of the story got too close to the state secret. His main character in the book, Professor Priobrazinsky, who transplants a human pituitary gland to a dog, is not a fiction. In the Soviet Union are similar experiments, but only to cross try to human and monkey. In 1924 Lenin dies. His death was the starting point for these events. The personal physician of the leader of the proletariat announces that he prematurely aged, worked a lot. The leadership of the country is worried, because they too have to give all their strength to the people. At this time on the political horizon and appears scientist Ilya Ivanov. The undeniable merit of Professor Ivanov and his life's work was the discovery and introduction of the method of artificial insemination in animal husbandry, which allowed the rational use of breeding producers and inseminate a significant number of females with one ejaculate. Biologist Ilya Ivanov pioneered the use of artificial insemination to produce interspecific hybrids, zebra and donkey, bison and domestic cow, antelope and cow, mouse and rat, mouse and guinea pig. It was believed that such offspring could give rise to new species of domestic animals, and this work developing genetics was valued. Following Ivanov's methodology, a stallion could fertilize not 20 or 30 mares, but 300 or 500 in one mating season in horses. The scientist actually saved Soviet agriculture and the army, namely the cavalry troops. But the professor went even further, which the modern scientific community does not like to discuss very much, he took a swing at creating a hybrid of monkey and human. At the World Congress of Zoologists, which was held in Graz, Austria, in 1910th year, Ivanov made a report on this subject. Naturally, the reaction of his colleagues was ambiguous. Some took his idea inspired, others, on the contrary, began to consider Ilya Ivanovich crazy, who imagined himself a god. But Ivanov did not care. He said that in the West want to cross a man with an ape, but are afraid to conduct such experiments because of the unacceptability of experiments from the point of view of generally accepted morality and religion. All Europe at the beginning of the 20th century is talking about eugenics, this revolutionary trend in genetics is searching for ways to improve the hereditary properties of man. And at the same time, the old world is not ready for such experiments. In secular salons they prefer to discuss the novel of a century ago English writer Mary Shelley about Frankenstein, guess who was the prototype and resent how anti-human it is. Later, eugenics will be associated exclusively with Nazi Germany. Meanwhile, Ivanov receives funding from the Soviet leadership and in the late 30s of the last century, the biologist leads an African expedition of the Academy of Sciences of the USSR to study the hybridization of great apes, and together with his son, also a biologist and also Ilya, created in Guinea Monkey Nursery. The local tribe helped the scientists to catch the animals, performing a ritual dance before the hunt, in which the basic principle was described warriors armed with clubs and bows tracked down a family of chimpanzees, dogs drove the individuals into a tree, 
around which a bonfire with intoxicating herbs was built, and the chimpanzees, gasping from the smoke, threw themselves down. Although the resulting monkeys, traumatized and severely stressed, were not suitable for the experiment, Ivanov did not give up on his plan. He had hoped to obtain some female pygmy monkeys from Gabon, but this was not fulfilled. Here is how Ilya Ivanovich wrote about his failure, gibbons, chimpanzees and pygmies were not delivered. As can be seen, the Darwinist did not see any difference between apes and black people. This ethical position explains much. From Africa Ivanov wrote to friends, work is in full swing. It does not get all of the planned, but there is no time to be discouraged. It is necessary not only to increase the number of experiments of artificial insemination of chimpanzees and gorillas with human sperm, but also to put the experiments of backcrossing. The Soviet professor bribed a French doctor who, under the guise of a medical examination, artificially inseminated the natives with monkey sperm. But no conception took place. The experiment was not completed because of the journalist. The station was penetrated by a correspondent of the emigrant newspaper in Paris Russian time, who in his article shared with the world such conclusions, the Bolsheviks decided to create a new Soviet race, capable to perceive and firmly assimilate communist ideas, half-human, half-monkey. The publication was instantly recognized in the Kremlin, and the expedition was cancelled. At the end of February 1927 Ivanov selected two of the healthiest female chimpanzees and performed artificial insemination using human sperm obtained from donors. Presumably, one of the donors was the scientist's son Ilya. At the end of June of the same year, the fertilization procedure was subjected to the third female. And in July, the scientists left Africa, taking with them 13 chimpanzees just after the journalistic scandal. After a brief stopover in France, the Ivanovs returned to the Soviet Union. By then they had discovered that the experiment had been a failure. All the monkeys Ivanov had obtained had died en route. They managed to bring only two of them back to the USSR, but they died after a few weeks. But an even greater blow to the scientist was the fact that none of the fertilized females did not become pregnant, as evidenced by the results of autopsy. Ilya Ivanovich thought he had made a mistake somewhere, so he decided to continue his work. On his order, the chimpanzees were taken to a special primate station in Sukhumi. European and Soviet colleagues treated Ivanov's plan with skepticism, but the scientist did not give up. Here is what he wrote, around, except for obvious confusion and even hooligan attitude, rarely see at least tolerant attitude to my unusual quest. However, I do not give up and, disregarding the antics of our elders and their sycophants, I continue to seek the opportunity to bring the initiated experiments to a more solid number and get an answer to the questions posed. I negotiate and hope to get support where, if there is no academic cap on my head, there is common sense and lack of professional intolerance. It must be said that the Soviet leadership, unlike the European leadership, saw nothing immoral or perverse in Ivanov's experiments. Therefore, he was given permission to conduct experiments. A special commission was assembled, which decided that the scientist would need at least five women for the experiment. And, surprisingly, finding them turned out to be simple simple. Invited women, volunteers, ready to participate in experiments on cross-breeding with a monkey. Such an announcement was published in the newspaper Soviet Abkhazia on May 18 of 1930. With the proviso interested ideologically, not materially. Ivanov received dozens of letters from all over the Soviet Union from women volunteers with requests to take them into his project. Here is one such message received from Leningrad. I dare to address you with a proposal. 
I learned from the newspapers that you made experiments of artificial fertilization of monkeys with human sperm, but the experiments failed. This problem has long interested me. My request is that you take me as an experiment. I beg you, don't refuse me. I will gladly submit to all the requirements of the experiment. I am confident of the possibility of fertilization. As a last resort, if you refuse, I ask you to write me the address of any of the foreign zoological scientists. What useful qualities should a human hybrid possess according to Ivanov's theory? How was he going to rejuvenate governments? As a basis, the scientist takes the work of his colleague Sergei Voronov, who conducted research in France. This professor got rich on his discovery. He once started everything with goats in Morocco. He transplanted the young glands of young goats to old goats. And the goats really turned from gray hair back into black hair, into brunettes, the former sex drive returned. Many people with money dared to perform these operations and really achieved results. The Soviet Union has just emerged from a difficult World War I. The country has been destroyed, people have died by the millions. Ivanov proposes to open a new industry in the country, to breed monkeys. After Lenin's death, when Stalin comes to power, he personally patronizes all sorts of secret developments. So, as the information on the production of superhumans was guarded, later only the secret of the atomic bomb was guarded. The country aimed to create a hybrid with special properties, the property of physical endurance, easy submission, respect for the vertical of power. It was assumed that of all lusts the most important would be sexual. It was supposed that such a hybrid would grow up very quickly, starting from a very early age, and even in strokes the possibility of spheres of utilization of these hybrids was described. For example, in heavy labor in the mines or as soldiers. We can assume that Ivanov's son and father realized the great political significance of the experiment. An ape-man baby would disprove the teachings of the Bible, which gave man a special position in the divine universe. As one Soviet functionary hoped, the experiment would free the working class from the power of the church, for even nearly ten years after the October Revolution, many workers and peasants in the Soviet Union remained believers. In addition, the ape-man baby would have been the final proof of Charles Darwin's theory of evolution, and a convincing victory for Soviet science in its competition with its Western counterparts. Ivanov's experiments since 1926 year were taken under the control of the NKVD, just as later work on the creation of nuclear weapons. The archives of this organization and its successors have not been seen in full by anyone. Ilya Ivanov made far-reaching plans and felt completely safe, was fully immersed in the scientific process. And trouble came from where Ivanov did not expect. In the summer of 1929th year died the only male who reached sexual maturity. The scientist had to send out new chimpanzees as a matter of urgency. They arrived in Tsukimi only a year later. But it was too late. A full-scale punitive purge of scientists had begun. The scientist Gorbanov fell into disgrace, followed by Ilya Ivanovich. In December of the 30th year of the last century, he was arrested and sent into exile in Almaty. True, Ivanov retained the title and position of professor. He worked at the local veterinary technical institute and dreamed of returning to experiments. But the dream was not destined to be realized, because in 1932nd year, the scientist suddenly died. Shortly before the end of his exile, in the obituary published in one of the scientific journals, Ivanov's experiments on crossbreeding between man and ape, which he considered almost the most important work of his life, were mentioned very sparingly, just one sentence. Thus ended the attempts of Soviet science to breed a monkey man. 
The fate of the professor's pets is unknown. The official version says that they died, but there is an opinion that some of the test subjects managed to survive. Allegedly, the mysterious Bigfoot is the result of Ivanov's experiments. What do you think of today's story? Put a like if you liked this video and subscribe to the channel, there are a lot of interesting things ahead.